A lot of you may not know, some of you will, because I've said it before, before like all this popped off, what I do right now to get my income, these various sources of uh, uh, like income streams that I do have. I worked in the tech industry. I worked in networking for a billion dollar uh, corporate entity. So not only do I know the industry itself, um, I know kind of the attitude that a lot of people have that are within it. Um, it is a, a lot of people over inflate, overstate, let's say that their importance to whatever company. Now, it doesn't mean that there isn't money in it. I've said this before. There's plenty of money there if you can gain the skill set uh, because pretty much every company and every industry needs it. Uh, you have that level of flexibility, whether it be on a small scale or a larger scale, to get decent paying jobs because there will be a need for you. However, um, there's a lot of fluff within that industry, and it is it can be competitive. So if you are worth a crap, someone else can come do your do your job. So I did want to talk about this, though, because this happened with Google, right? Google has laid off you guys that don't know. This article from CNBC. They cut 12,000 employees. It says uh, on Friday, uh, Google announced it was uh, cutting 12,000 employees, roughly 6% of the full-time workforce. So that just lets you know how many employees work. I don't think people know how big this company is, uh, uh, Google, uh, per se, or Alphabet whatever way you want to put it, that they can cut 12,000 jobs full time and it's only 6%. But it is fluff. And I'm going to get to that here in a little bit. While employees have been bracing, been bracing for a potential layoff, they are questioning leadership about the criteria for layoffs, which surprised some employees who woke up to find their access to the company properties cut off. Some of the laid off employees have been have been long tenured or recently promoted, raising questions about the criteria to decide whose jobs were cut. Um, shortly after CEO Sundar Pichai's uh, initial uh, email to employees Friday, a morning Google search boss, some other guy I can't whose name I can't. Uh, I don't know. How I spell it out. Uh, sent an email to employees saying he also feels the responsibility to reach out and asking them, uh, asking for them to save questions for next week's town hall. There will be bumps in the road as the organization moves forward with layoffs. The company provided a fact uh, for the layoffs, which CNBC has seen, but employees have complained that it doesn't give much detail on uh, many answers. Employees have flooded during the company's question-asking platform and set up virtual communities to figure out who's been laid off and why directors have been telling employees to hold questions for the town hall taking place next week. Google did not immediately respond to a request for the comment. Um, says uh, the scramble highlights the challenges Google could face in maintaining a supportive and productive company culture for its rest of uh, workforce of more than 160,000. So many employees, 160,000 employees. I'm willing to bet like a good chunk of them are not needed. I know it's a big company. It is. But. You know, just the fact that they were able to lay off that many it just goes to show. And I'm going to show you guys something here in a little bit, how kind of crazy things are. Matter of fact, let me pull that up. Google had employees. I'm going to show you guys a video real quick. It's, it's very similar to the Twitter situation, right? People said all those layoffs are happening where a significant amount of the re, uh, workforce. Now nobody's talking about it. Significant amount of that workforce got cut with the Elon Musk uh, kind of situation. And what happened? Nothing. Platform still running, um, even better. I had a guy that owes me money. Y'all remember that tweet? Tweet uh, guy. It, it, he, he suggested that it was going to be some like because they cut all these senior engineers or whatever. There was going to be these big um, like outages and stuff like that, and it never happened. But this is the type of stuff that goes on in the day in the life of a Google employee. Check this out life working from the Google LA office. I always grab some candy from the reception before heading in. This used to be an old aircraft hangar, so the decorations hanging from the ceiling kind of looks like an aircraft flying in. Before it was a Google office, this aircraft hangar belonged to Howard Hughes, so there's tons of memorabilia. Next, I'm gonna pass by these art installations. They're a really good photo op, or you can sit in there and get some work done. I'm gonna head to the coffee shop to grab some coffee and a fruit cup since I missed breakfast, and then I'm heading over to this butterfly-themed room to take my first meeting. Then I'm gonna head over 
to the confetti room to take my next meeting. It's so sparkly and beautiful in here. I love that a lot of our rooms are themed. Then I'm gonna grab my two favorite drinks, which is this green tea and coconut water. Next, I'm gonna go upstairs and grab some lunch. They always have pizza and a variety of different vegetables and meat. So it's much like Twitter. Really good. And of course, everything you... Uh, free lunch. Well, she's gonna mention that. In the office is free. Okay. On my way out free of the lunches. Cafe, I ran into a doogler, which is a dog googler, and ran into some ghosts. When they were renovating the office, there were a lot of spooky stories from the crew. So there's a whole area in the office where you can listen to them. Then I got more work done and headed over to the massage chairs to wrap up my day. Let me know what you want to see next. So it's very similar to Twitter, where it's like it's a whole bunch of nothing, right? It's um meetings meetings and what does that actually mean and i say this is a business owner that employs you know employees a uh, decent amount <laughs> not nothing too close to to google but you know we have meetings but i start to question when that is like your entire job i start to question um how valuable you are um to the to the company and how or not even that it's more of how inefficient the company is when um you know because what is actually work what does work look like when you're whole maybe there's a job title or two that requires you to have more let's say meetings than let's say someone else but you know for my guys for example we'll have a meeting like in the morning everybody's touching base on on all that and then everybody has own individual actual work to do i would see something is significantly wrong if uh, i and this is what happened like with twitter employees you see a lot of these they all the same it's we go do stuff. We get that. We have all these perks for working for this uh, obviously multi billion dollar uh, corporation. It has perks that are with. And I'm not against people like buildings having perks and, and stuff like that. But it's meeting, meeting, meeting. Not actual work. Just meeting, meeting, meeting. It's um, massage chair, free food, meeting, meeting. All right. Are you actually valuable to the company, or are these f jobs fake? be for real and when you got that much money to play with of course however a lot of people don't know like even with a company like a, a google um sometimes or youtube even they, they sometimes operate at a loss right there's a lot of money fluctuating in because of ads and all that of course but you know it, obviously if if the money goes let's say down even slightly in terms of how much they're bringing in how much uh, it's worth let's say that definitely with inflation well you know, you're going to make cuts. doesn't matter if it, what the actual number is, just how that their business is structured. There's a lot of uh, sometimes they may operate in the red. So, yeah, these jobs, these types of jobs are going to be the ones that are the first ones to go because they don't actually need you. And then you'll spawn like with Twitter. You cut those jobs with big tech. Nothing happens. No, nothing happens. It was a house of cards, but more more so these were not needed jobs. But because you had the luxury of that much money floating in, uh, uh, funneling through the company through various ways, and pretty much every massive mega corporation has jobs like this, right? The ones that are bringing a lot of money, they have jobs where basically they're not, it, it's a gig and it's not really needed, right? It, it's not really, that person may do, do like a day's worth of work in a week. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily needed for a full-time um, position. And we saw here with some of the guys that got cut, uh, coming from uh, Yahoo, let me show you this. Real quick. No, Insider, excuse me. Some Google workers who have been laid off earn as much as a million dollars a year. Right? So Google managers who spoke on the conditions, uh, they, of course, had to do it anonymously or wanted to, told the outlet that some who lost their jobs, including those with high scores on performance reviews and managerial positions earning between 500000 and a million a year. Look, guys. It's like with Twitter, man, with the growth of tech and the definitely depending on where you're at with an economic with the economics like or with the economy is going to largely determine how much you can do within your individual business. OK, that's just what it is. If the economy is in a decent spot, there are going to be more jobs that are not needed. But as the money gets thin with the inflationary issues right now, uh, business just isn't booming like it once was. Well, of course, you're going to make those cuts and then you'll see that a lot of these jobs aren't really necessary. And this is why I say that these guys overstate 
what it is that they're doing. I welcome this whole um, – we're seeing this with various different spots. We always cover these layoffs, cover them in Hollywood, we cover them in, um, uh, with Big Tech. I welcome that sort of stuff because it's an identifier. When someone with that much money has to cut people, it's an identifier really truly of where not only the economy is but where that maybe that industry um, is at and it's worth paying attention to. Now, what I hope happens out of this is, yeah, you don't – just from a, where I'm at, I don't want – the economy to be bad. A lot of it's government influenced. Actually, I'd argue the vast majority of it is certainly go- government induced in terms of some of the problems that you have within uh, your, your economy. But uh, uh, there's advantages that can be taken from from this. You know, like kind of what I did with comics, what other people are doing in other industries where, you know, the shaking and moving and just a sheer turmoil presents itself an opportunity. But big tech is... Um, I don't know if it's on a is it on a house of cards? I guess that's a question that can add. I think some of it is. I think some of it's fluff, and um, it's as the money gets tighter, these jobs are going to start going away. 